Hi everyone, we are back with our Monday afternoon watershed Lake River Stream story time. I hope that you had a good time last week listening to the Trouty story read by um, our stormwater program manager, Kara. And you might in the next few weeks get to hear a few more people than just me. Um, I have some books, but you know, just like everybody else, we can't get out to the library right now. And so um, some of my coworkers are filling in and helping us get our stories out there, even though um, the story supply is running thin at my house. But I have a really good story for you today that I've been sharing. And it is the book called I've been saving, sorry, let's explore a river. Now this is an older book. I actually got it when my kid's school was getting rid of um, old books out of their library because I thought, why would you get rid of let's explore a river? What a fun story. So this is a book that was written um, in the late eighties. And so some of you um, might have parents who were kids at this time and might recognize some of the clothing styles and hairstyles in this book. Uh, this is part of a series that National Geographic did, which is really fun, has a lot of really good photographs. Um, photographs are taken by a man named Joseph Bailey, and the text is written by a woman named Jane McCauley. So we're going to read through this story. This book, um, you can't really tell from the front, but as we go through, you'll notice that the river in this book is a little bit different than maybe some of the rivers that you might see around here, because the kids in this book are exploring a river in Florida. Um, but what's interesting is that there are a lot of things in this book and in this river that are really similar to rivers and streams here in Michigan. So as we're going through, I would encourage you, if you're familiar with creatures and rivers and systems here in Michigan, to try to identify if you can see anything that's different about this book than what you might see in Michigan. And I'll try to point some things out to you as well. But I hope this book, uh, you enjoy it and that it gives you some ideas for how you can get outside and explore nature and explore water in your neighborhood and your community as well while you're home. All right, let's explore a river. Caleb, I'm going to try to scoot a little bit closer so you can see better. Caleb, Kelly, and Crystal are excited. They are setting out with their father to explore a river near their home. It's a sunny spring day. Life vests protect the children in the canoe. Their father helps Caleb tie his vest, then off they go. Maybe you guys have had a chance to get out into a canoe or a kayak recently with some of the nice weather that we've had. As the canoe drifts down the river, ripples move over the water. To the children, the river seems silent as if nothing lived there. Use your eyes and ears, their father whispers. Things are hiding all around you. It's a little hard to see the color here, but this river is very, like a beautiful turquoisey green color, not a very different color than what you see of some of the water around here. But I love what their father says. Use your eyes and ears. Things are hiding all around you. The trees and plants along the river are full of animals. Some stay out of sight in the daytime. A bobcat may creep down to the river to drink. We have bobcats here in Michigan, although probably not in our more urban areas, but if you get up north where it's a little more wild, you might see him. An egret flies low over the grasses along the bank. The bird wades in shallow water on its long legs and pokes its long beak into the water to catch fish. Close by, a rat snake climbs a tree. Its muscles and its scaly skin help keep the snake from slipping. So there's the egret. We see these around here and the rat snake. Have you guys seen any snakes yet? With the weather warming up? We saw a water snake a few, um, a few days ago in a creek nearby our house. Kelly and Crystal dip their hands into the river and feel the water moving against their fingers. The movement of a river is called its current. Plants growing on the river bottom move gently with the current. Large fish, such as the Florida gar, swim along the bottom looking for smaller fish to eat. So this is where you see they're talking about a Florida fish. This is the guy over here. This is the gar. Now we do not have Florida gar in here in Michigan, but we do have a uh, gar. We've got long-nosed gar and a lot less common, but you might find a spotted gar too. And it's a really cool fish, long and skinny. Look how long that nose is. 
Um, if you look up pictures of the long nose gar, you'll see it's even longer than that. It's a really cool fish. Caleb picks up a water lettuce plant to see what might be hiding there. A spider crawls over a leaf. An insect that lives on the surface of the river is the water strider. It can skate across the water. A turtle is warming itself on a log. It's, if it sees the family, the turtle might swiftly slide back into the river. It's not always happened. When you see a turtle, you want to get up close and look at it more closely, but it makes it scared and it slides away. Now, if you see this plant, this water lettuce in Michigan, that's actually not a good thing. This is not a plant that is native to Michigan. It's native to southern, more tropical climates. And so in Michigan, this plant is very, very invasive. It's an invasive species. We don't want it here. So um, there are places that you can report sightings of invasive species to help um, managers in the state try to contain it and take care of it. So hopefully you don't see water lettuce, but you might see water lilies or some other aquatic plants that are native to Michigan. Um, and you'll probably see water striders and spiders and all kinds of interesting things under the water if you were to look under the water as well. Near the river, the children wander among wild grapevines and cypress trees. A warbler sings from a branch. The stumps on the ground are parts of the roots of cypress trees. They are called knees. This is the one thing in this book that we really don't have here. We don't have um, these trees with these cool cypress knees like this in Michigan. If you're along the edge of a river here, you might see things like a silver maple or a willow or a swamp white oak, which are all uh, native Michigan species, but they don't have these cool knees like this tree does. What is cool is you might see birds like these. You might see these warblers, especially this time of year, because these birds are migrating from their winter homes in the south up north towards uh, areas like the Great Lakes where they make their summer nests. And so if you are a bird watcher, you might start to see some of these really beautiful birds. And uh, during Earth Week, we are going to have uh, some crafts, one of which is about making some binoculars to see some birds. With a magnifying glass, Kelly looks closely at lichens on a branch. Lichens are plants that don't need soil to grow. Some kinds grow on rocks. These are lichens right here. A fuzzy caterpillar tickles Crystal's fingers. Caleb carefully holds a tiny frog, but only for a few minutes. Many kinds of plants bloom in the woods in spring. Jack in the pulpit grows in the shade. Violets add soft cover. Soft color, sorry. Yeah, so here's the jack in the pulpit, and this is a great time of year to get outside. If you're getting outside into nature on some trails or hiking in the woods, it's a great time to look for flowers like these. Violets are blooming now. We've gathered a whole bunch this weekend. My kids picked a bunch. Uh, jack in the pulpit I haven't seen up yet, but is coming very soon. Lots of beautiful spring ephemerals. They're called flowers that come up early in the spring, and they only last a little while. So it's a great time to get outside and looking for plants. Thirsty and hungry, the family stops for a picnic. After the busy morning, the food tastes good. The children take off their shoes and rest for a while. There are many enjoyable things to do along a river. From Hersey down a grapevine, Crystal watches people paddling by in canoes. Maybe, have you ever had a picnic along a river? Even if you can't get in, that's a nice thing to do, just see what's out there and watch what's going on. On rubber tubes filled with air, people lazily float down the river with the current some people ride rafts and others swim. The river is so clear they can see the bottom. That might be something a little bit different about some of these more southern rivers as well. Most of ours aren't um, quite so green and warm right now, right? They're pretty muddy and um, cold at this time of year. But later in the summer, you might have an opportunity to get out and get on a tube and enjoy some of the rivers and streams in our watershed as well. Fishing from a pier can be fun. Crystal tries hard to catch a fish before her brother and sister do. She likes the way water feels on her bare feet. The children use pieces of bread as bait. A bird called a kingfisher doesn't need bait or a pole. It can dive off a branch and grab a fish from the river in its long beak. So this is a belted kingfisher up in the corner here. Got a little, fi got a little fish in his mouth. And that is a bird that you will see very commonly um, in our watershed. It's a really cool bird. They make a rattly, um, almost like a little machine gun sound, and they fly across the water and swoop down and we'll get a little fish out and you can watch them, it's really cool. Otters are good at fishing too. 
yummy, one seems to say, twitching its whiskers after a meal. An otter glides through the water, paddling with its webbed feet. It steers with its furry tail. The otter pokes its whiskers and nose between the rocks and into the mud on the river bottom. It may find crayfish like this one to eat. So technically river otters are, we're in river otters range. It's pretty uncommon to see one unless you're in a pretty wild area, but you might see a crayfish. We caught a crayfish last week in a creek. It was exciting. My daughter said it bit her on the toe. I've never been bitten by a crayfish, but maybe, maybe it happened. Time to cool off. The children wade in shallow water near the riverbank. Their father watches from the bank behind them. The rocky bottom feels hard. Don't splash, squeals Kelly. How much fun they're having. You should always be careful if you go in the river. Make sure it's not too much current. It's not too deep. You've got a parent with you. You've got good shoes on on your feet. Um, I wonder, it's interesting, depending on which river or creek you're in, sometimes the bottom is rocky and hard like they had, and sometimes the bottom is a little bit softer or sandier. So it really depends on where you're at. But it can be really fun to play in the water. A squirrel on a tree chatters as the canoe passes. Caleb has found more water lettuce. Remember, we don't want to find water lettuce here. Kelly and Crystal break off one of the fungus plants growing on a dead tree. It's like powder inside, Kelly says. So that fungus looks like maybe it's not super alive anymore. Near the end of the trip, the family paddles through a wide part of the river where wild rice grows. The children will return another day. On their next visit, the river may look very different. So you can kind of see down in the bottom here, um, this area that they're, that they're paddling through has something called wild rice. And I know that you're probably thinking of rice that comes in a bag from the grocery store, but um, there is wild rice that grows in Michigan too. And in fact, it's a really important food source for the native people who have lived here for a long time, the Native Americans. They uh, would cultivate wild rice into the riverbeds and they would it was a really important source of food for them. And there are a few places, just a very few places in the Grand River watershed and the Kalamazoo River watershed, places where you can still find wild rice growing, which is really cool. Um, it looks a little bit more like your long grain, you know, dark colored whole grain type of rice, not so much like the white rice that you get from the grocery store. As the seasons change, the river changes too. On a winter day, a great blue heron walks among the grasses by the river. It lives here all year. So do many other creatures. Few leaves cover the trees in the winter. In Michigan, pretty much none. The river seems empty, but Crystal, Kelly, and Caleb have learned that something is happening all the time. And that is true here as well. There's always something happening in the river. There's always things that are alive. Uh, and in a few weeks, we are gonna have a really fun video posted for you where we do a virtual stream study. So you will get into, uh, you'll be able to see some of the things that are living in the stream right now and learn about how that helps us tell how healthy the stream is. So I'm really excited to share that video with you. We're working on it right now. So that's the end of that story. Um, but this book has this really interesting part at the end. And I'm not going to like make you read the words because they're so tiny, but I want to show you this picture of what these two kids are making in this picture. And they are making a little uh, water watching box. Let's see what they called it. They called it a water scope. So what they did is they took a milk carton and they cut off the bottom and covered it with saran wrap, cellophane. And what you can do is use that to look into the water. So if you live near a pond or a river or a stream or you're out having a hike and there's water nearby, you can make one of these water scopes. And what's cool is that then you can look down. You don't have to put your face under water. You can just stick your scope in the water and you can kind of look at what's going on down underneath the water. It's a fun way to see kind of the plants that are down there, what the bottom of the river looks like. Uh, maybe if there's any fish or little bugs or anything, crawling around down there, um, you can see that with your water scope. So I would encourage you, if you know that you're going to be out going to a river or a stream or a pond, that you make yourself a water scope and see what you can see down there. Maybe bring along a little net, see what you can catch and have fun with that. Um, I shared these in a previous week, but in case you haven't seen our other videos, um, some really fun books for if you're out and you're wondering what it is that you saw. Um, there's a lot of really good guides to Michigan species. So one of them is this one, uh, Michigan Frogs, Toads, and Salamanders. And this is a book that you can get from the Michigan State University Extension. And it tells you how to identify all the different kinds of frogs and toads and salamanders that live in Michigan, which are all coming out again now, and we can hear them at night, which is really fun. 
Uh, we also have, if you're a stream, pond, brook person, this Michigan turtles and lizards. So we have very few true lizards in Michigan, but um, we have lots of different kinds of turtles. And so this can help you identify the turtles that you see. And then uh, this one before is not quite as Michigan based. Oh, this one's also an MSU extension book. And this book is not as Michigan based. Um, it's more of like a Northeastern US, but pond and brook. And this gives you a little bit more information about the ecology of ponds and streams and wetlands in um, the sort of Northeastern United States. And it's really fun. It's a good reference and it has some identification species, uh, identification bits in it as well. So that's Pond and Brook by Michael. Caduto. So those are some books I recommend if you want to go out and find out what you're seeing outside in the river. But I hope you enjoyed the story today. Please tune in on Wednesday. We have a really fun activity that we'll be doing where we'll be learning about aquifers and where our drinking water comes from and how to keep the drinking water clean. So we're going to be building our own aquifer out of some stuff that you can hopefully find around your own house. Hopefully see you then. Thanks, everybody.